Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Brad, and welcome back to Screamin' Pirate EDC. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about three knives that you shouldn't buy. Now, let me put a caveat on this. This is all my opinion. I might break some hearts here. Uh, I'm not sure. Um, some people like these knives a whole hell of a lot. But I really think that the, there are better knives out there than the ones that I'm going to show you. Um, once again, my opinion. But before we get into the knives, what do I have on me today? This is the Death Wish Coffee Pie Day mug. You know, baked and sweet on the outside and dead on the inside, guys. <laughs> uh, next up, my pry and multi-tool is going to be the Penguin Pry from Scorpion 6. I got this at Blade Show, Texas. After that, my light is going to be the Raylite Mini Pineapple, or Pineapple Mini. Uh, I got this from Urban EDC Supply. There is a link in the bio. Go ahead and check that out. Speaking of Urban EDC Supply, uh, the code PIRATE5, P-I-R-A-T-E-5, will get you 5% off any Urban EDC Supply Nessie except the Brown Micarta, and Pirate 10 will get you 10% off the Brown Micarta. So go ahead, check out the link and pick you up a Nessie. After that, my Hank is going to be the Screamin' Pirate EDC Hank from Renegade EDC. Once again, link in the description. Okay, all that is out of the way. Let's get into the knives and uh, which ones we're talking about. So the three knives are going to be the EMP Nimble. This is gonna be the XL and the regular Nimble, but specifically the XL here. Next is going to be the Spyderco stove pipe. And after that, we have the CJRB Malia. Now these are three knives that I do not recommend that you buy. Let's go ahead and head top down and check out why. All right, guys, we are top down. Now, uh, from the top down, we have the EMP Nimble, I think this is the XL, um, or the X is what he's calling it. Let me go ahead and grab the smaller one because it did come in the pass around. Unboxing that right now for you guys. Um, there he is. So let me go ahead and move all this down a little bit for you and set him there to give you an idea of what you're looking at in size. Now, the reason I say these are three knives you shouldn't buy is because I'm gonna go through one by one and kind of show you what I think. Um, so let's start with the CRJB Malia. So I'm gonna go ahead and have some stats that are gonna pop up right in here somewhere. Part of the problem with this knife, guys, is, let me focus on it, is it's not comfortable in hand. So I wear a large glove and this is a three finger grip, but even if I get up here, my finger's literally on the blade. If I'm here, this is wildly uncomfortable and the clip is a massive hotspot. Um, my wife who wears a small glove, she's tiny guys, she doesn't like this knife or, or carrying it. Um, next, I want you to look at this lock bar access. Like there's no jimping, it's barely there. You gotta get like a fingernail down in there to even actuate it. And then the detent is strong. And like, <laughs> there he goes. That's my finger getting eaten up, just trying to actuate that lock bar. It just, the front flip is good with the detent and that's about all I can say about this knife. The jimping, I mean, I understand they wanted a swedge on this thing, but like it, it's, it's not where I would put it because the only way you're using that jimping is if you're all the way back here and then you can use it. If you're up here, your finger, you, this is not a comfortable grip for damn near anybody. Um, yeah, guys, I just think in the budget knife category, there's knives with better lock bar access, more comfortable, more ergonomic. Uh, yeah, they're just better knives. <laughs> I mean, there's no other way to put it. So that's why I don't really like the Malia. Um, I think that if they improved the you know lock bar access here and you weren't like you know pinching the shit out of your hand and maybe may improve the ergonomics, it would be a better knife. But I mean, they made an extra large and that's what you guys are gonna say, but I don't want an extra large of this knife if that lock bar is gonna be the same. So that's why you should not buy the Malia. Next up, well, I'm gonna, might catch some crap for this, I might not. So this is the Spyderco stove pipe. Um, this is a 400, $425 knife, guys. Uh, I like that it has, you know, a hollow grind here at the tip. 
that's cool. It's too bad it starts here and not all the way up because it still doesn't get very thin. Um, also, I mean, visually, Spyderco knives are ugly, and this is probably the ugliest that ever ugged. Um, the other problem here is, yeah, it's comfortable in hand, but here's the problem. You see all of these corners, this corner, this corner, this corner, you know, over in here, all of these corners are not fully chamfered. They, they tried to make it look kind of industrial, but the problem is, is like that corner here, here, all these corners are not fully chamfered or properly chamfered. So when it's in your hand, they bite into you. This clip, even though it's flat, I mean, this thing just eats up your hand. I mean, if I bear, and I'm talking like, guys, I'm squeezing, see my fingers turning red? Look what that clip does to my hand, guys. You can see the outline of the clip. I mean, come on. I mean, the clip has all sorts of hot spots in here and around here. And it's just, this is not a $400 knife. It's just not. I would have rather than made non-contoured scales, flat scales, that are, you know, and made this knife $300. That would have made this knife worth it to me. I mean, it's just, it's just not it, guys. I don't think that knife is worth the money. I mean, and here's the thing, if that's a knife you like and you like that size and you like all that, well, in my personal opinion, if you want a spider coat that damn bad, Danger Pickle exists. And they're almost the same size, guys. And this is more comfortable. It's vastly more comfortable in hand. Like, vastly more comfortable than this. And it's cheaper. <laughs> like, this is not the spider coat to buy, guys. That's all I'm going to say about that. You know, they tried to make it unique and they ended up just flopping it. So that's why I would not buy the stovepipe. All right, guys, so we have those out of the way, and now I think the one that's going to be the most controversial is the Nimble. So there are a couple things about the Nimble. First up, uh, you have knives in the same category that I believe are better. I, I think that they are, you know, they're designer knives. They're not, you know, they're not maker knives, but I think that they are more refined. You know, you have your Vero Synapse, your Arcane Crawler, and uh, review soon for your Null Knives Raiden. I mean, there gives you a general idea in size, guys. They're all better knives. Every single one of those knives is better than the Nimble. Uh, the same complaint I had about the small one, I have about the big one. Um, so, honestly, guys, it's too thin. And what I mean by too thin is the same issue I had with the Malia. There's no jimping here on that lock bar. So yeah, you have access to it, but you really got to dig up in there in order to release that knife. I mean, you're not going to be able to get to that easy. There needs to be jimping there. In fact, if you look at the Raiden, right there, you can make it out. There is jimping on that lock side so that you can actuate that lock bar out. Um, also, this big old like hunk between your fingers, not comfortable. Um, this jimping is barely functional. Um, it works for front flipping the knife and that's about it. When my finger's out here, it's just moving all over the place. Um, doesn't do much for me. And when my thumb is any farther than say here, I'm, I'm running into this corner, which isn't chamfered very well. Also, this frag pattern was tumbled too long. So this is smooth in your hands. There's no grip, there's no texture, there, there's no nothing on it. You know, you'd have a better time with G10, honestly, or Micarta, honestly, guys. Um, and Micarta inlay on this would help this knife a whole lot. Also, he calls this a sheep's foot. I, I mean, it's more like a spear point. I mean, it's like a knife that doesn't know what it is, guys. He calls it a sheep's foot. It has like, you know, you know, 30,000 openings. Um, I think this clip is a travesty. <laughs> uh, it, you know, it's okay. It, it goes in and out of pocket, but like it doesn't, it doesn't add to the knife. There's, it's distracting. It doesn't look right. I mean, you can open and close the knife, but I mean, none of this keeps your hand in place. Your hand's going to be moving. Um, I really think that this knife could be hollow ground as well. I think a hollow grind and, uh, you know, maybe some inserts would really help out the nimble. 
Um, so in my mind, this knife is just an incomplete product. Um, if you're gonna buy a designer knife, well, there's the other ones on the table that I think are better than it. And if you don't like those, then I like the TW Price Dawn. And if none of those are your cup of tea, well, you know, you have custom makers like Matthew Ware and Brian Brown also doing production knives that are vastly superior. Um, well, with all that being said, guys, let's go ahead and head back up top for final conclusions. All right, guys, we are back up top. Now, whether you agree with my opinions on these knives or not, you know, that's, that's for you. Put it down in the comments. I'd love to see what you guys think. Uh, if you like the video, thumbs up. If you don't, thumbs down. Any interaction, you know what? It helps me. Uh, with that being said, guys, these are not knives that I would purchase. I just won't. Um, I know a lot of people like the Nimble. I think that there are a lot of things that could be improved upon. Uh, if you don't know me already about this, I'm also an auditory person when it comes to knives. And honestly, the Nimble, when you do this close, it sounds cheap. Um, I think part of that is the bla the handles being tubbled too long. Um, I really do, guys. Uh, it's just not a knife I would buy. There are a lot of other production knives out there around this uh, you know, price range from designers, et cetera, that are just better. Uh, as far as the Spyderco, guys, at 425, no, just no. <laughs> I mean, you can get a lot in that price range. And, you know, just to name a few, you're looking at, you know, Henders, Chris Reeve, uh, Chavez. I mean, you're looking at a lot right there that are all better than this knife. And they have better chamfering. And then last, the guy, the Malia. If you're looking for less than 50 bucks, you can do better than the Malia. You just can. Lock bar access, you know, detent, etc. You know, check out a QSP Penguin or a Civivi. I just don't think this is the one. With that being said, guys, go ahead, like, comment, and subscribe. And you know what? I'll catch you on the next one.